there, I thought I was going to be very much alone with uh, with no one to share my class, and so thank you for coming. That's uh, my Okay. <laughs> okay, and you guys are saying nice things. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, again, I see some old friends, and I see some new friends, and I welcome all of you here. Let's go ahead and start the way we normally start, by introducing ourselves quickly, explaining who we are and why we're here. I'll start so you get some idea of, of what we're going to say and how. My name is Kevin Butterfield. I am old. Uh, I've, I've uh, been a teacher for like 32 years. And I'm teaching here. I'm here in this class because they told me I had to be here in this class. Um, but I teach for Kalingo because it's a lot of fun. I have fun with the class. I love talking to people all over the world. And as I said in the last class, they pay me, which is also a very good reason to do anything. So that's who I am. That's why I'm here. And uh, Alessandro, if you would like, or Ahmed, you first. If you would like to begin, I would appreciate it. Ahmed, can you hear? Okay, when it comes back up, we'll get somebody else. Uh, Alessandro, welcome. Yeah. Uh, yes. you're, Thank you're, you. Welcome. Now, where do you live, Alessandro? This is my fifth time. Oh, okay. Okay. I assure you we are all friends. <laughs> okay? We all help each other out. Um, I have made mistakes, and they've caught me on them. <laughs> my students have. In fact, they like doing that. Um, but, but why are you here? Is there a, a specific reason why we're here, why you're here, that you're looking for? I'm here, you? Oh, why you are here at this place in this class? Um, I am yes, I'm place. I'm from Brazil. Okay, okay, and you are in this class to learn more English. Is is that why? Mm, no, I, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, we'll just go on, and and as as we do more, you'll learn more. So that's that's fine. This is your first class, and it's an advanced class. So it might be a little much for you, but that's okay. We'll help you. We'll help you. That's what we're here for. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you. Sure. Uh, Danya M. Danya. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hi, teacher. Hello. Hello. Um, where are you calling us from? I'm from Saudi Arabia. I Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, in Jeddah, that's right. Yeah, I joined Colengo because they want to improve my English language. Okay. Uh, to complete my higher study, to get the master degree Ooh. in USA. <laughs> oh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I hope so. Now, uh, where do you want to go to get your master's degree? And what do you want to get uh, it in? Uh, not yet. I haven't decided yet. Okay. Uh, what do you want to get your master's degree in? Master's degree in uh, communication. Oh, communi oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> I have a bachelor's degree in communication studies, but I got oh. it a long time ago. Uh, so I, I, hope, I hope very much that you will enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> now it's uh, Denya, Denya H. And welcome. Where are you calling us from? Um, I am from Honduras. Honduras. Yeah, but I live in, right now in Minnesota. Wow. Minneapolis. Awfully yeah. cold up there. <laughs> oh, horrible. It's, it's a positive to Honduras. Honduras uh, is warm. <laughs> quite a difference. <laughs> yeah. What, what, why are you in uh, Minneapolis? Uh, I live with my husband. Ah. Mm -hmm. And your husband said, we're going to Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, why are you in this class? Um... Really, I, I I don't work right now. I speak a little English. I need to learn more. What's happening? Okay, go on. Bad internet for a minute. Uh huh. Okay, you're okay now. Go ahead. Ah, huh? <laughs> you didn't hear me. <laughs> okay, este, right now I I don't I don't work. Mm -hmm. Uh, I need to learn uh, more about the uh, English. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, this is a great place to learn, just because we get together and we chat and we have conversation, which I think is the best possible way to learn English. 
I have a problem. I I can understand when it's a bright English. I I I can to I can write English, but I don't understand when the people uh, talk with me. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, the Midwestern is a very good place to learn English because it's the common pronunciation. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm glad you're here because all we do is talk. Yeah. And that will give you the practice. Good place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, welcome. Welcome. Ah, uh, thank you. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Dimitri. Dimitri, how are you, sir? Dimitri? Dimitri? Okay, we'll go on. Manuel, Manuel, how are you? Fine. Good, good. Uh, what brings you to this class? Yes. Why are you here? Oh, this is my pretty face. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. If you don't feel comfortable talking, you don't have to. But this is a conversation class, so I will be asking you questions, okay? And uh, Osama, welcome back. Welcome back. It's good to see you again, or not see you, as the case may be. Come back again, teacher. Hi. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, my name is Osama. I live in Saudi Arabia. I'm a student. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. And we've got Soso. Hello, Soso. Welcome back. I Hello can't, again. <laughs> can't get enough of you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> All righty, and now we've got Thais. Um, hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I am doing well. Can you tell me where you live, please? Yeah, I'm in Brazil. Brazil, okay. Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo? And, uh, yeah, Sao Paulo. And... Um, I I saw your class and I think you, you you're a great teacher. Oh, thank you. You, you have a great way um, for teaching people, and you have to to understand all the different accents to to be able to to teach, right? So I think it's great. Well, thank you. You're making me blush, and my head is turning red. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Layla. No, you're not. Uh, uh, my, this is my sister's. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome. Yeah, you don't look like her. That's for sure. <laughs> 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 what is your name? Because I mean, Layla, and then um, uh, Sama. I think has also used the account. Um, and now it's your turn. What is your name, please? Uh, Benjamin. 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 Yes. Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin. Okay, good, good. We would pronounce it usually Benjamin if someone came from here, but uh, again, Benjamin is is, um, is is the more Arabic pronunciation. Okay. Well, again, all of you, all of you, all of you, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this class is a vocabulary class, and the whole point to this particular class is to do a little bit of reading, and as we go in the context of our reading, to start learning words. But one of the best ways to learn words and what they mean is to use what we call context clues. D does everyone know what that means? A context clue? Yes. Okay, what does it mean? Who would like to tell me? I get the meaning from the context. Yeah. Uh, after colons, let's say definition, mm -hmm. quotation marks. Okay, yeah. From the, from the context like itself. Now, what we'll do as we read along is I might read first and I'll ask one of you to read and then we'll just discuss what that word, there's several words in there and what they might mean. And if you don't know a word, by all means, somebody ask it uh, and we'll, we'll work through and see if we can come up with it. All right, this is going on the screen and let's see, I talk about Working with partners and working with words, I want to talk, first of all, about how we would write in the United States. This is really important if you want to take the TEFL test because there is an essay on the TEFL test that you have to write an essay in 25 minutes. And the way people write in the American style of writing and in many other countries are very different from each other. 
in, in countries outside of the US, you generally have paragraphs that lead up to a point. Americans are much more direct. They, they say, the best way to say it is, you tell people what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. It's like, you can see, let me bring this up a little bit so you can see it better. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make it even bigger. Okay, everybody can see that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The hook of an essay, I don't like that particular word, but it's it's good one. The hook is the thing that drags you in, okay? It's an introduction. It, it makes you want to keep reading the sentence. Um, there are many songs that have a, a refrain. Um, let's see. Uh, does anyone know any songs by the Beatles? The Beatles. Anybody? Beatles. Yeah, old old group. One Direction. What's that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Revolution. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, One Direction. One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, songs that people listen to. Oh, here's a, yeah. Um, hip hop or rap music is becoming very popular all around the world, and and it has a beat, and it's the beat that drags you in. Okay, that's their hook. In an English essay, it is a question or a comment. It could be, if you were writing an essay on um, football, okay? Everybody here knows football, yes? Mm -hmm. yes. What we call soccer in America. Oh, yes. And let's say if, if you are a fan and someone said, what if I told you Real Madrid was the best soccer team in the world? Well, if you're a Barcelona fan, you will take exception, right? Am I right? Yeah. Or no. if you're a fan of another team, you'll say, I don't think so, right? And then you want to read what that person says mm -hmm. to, to justify it. Or there might be a question, um, how many times have you wanted to go to the bottom of the sea? You see? Something to grab your attention and bring you in. After that, <laughs> this is the main idea. And let's say we started with this bottom of the sea thing. You then say what the main idea of this composition is. This composition is going to talk about, or this essay is going to talk about the new and amazing life forms that have been found at the bottom of the sea. Okay? Then you come up with the main ideas, the main points. Okay, and you would talk about the different life forms that have been found there. I mean, the acorn worms, the brittle stars, the shrimp, the strange sharks, that sort of thing. But those would all be Star, different the points. Shrimp, the strange sharks, that sort of thing. Uh, ben, well, I think you've got some feedback. Okay, good. Uh, and that's your supporting details. And your conclusion is simply wraps everything up in a neat package. So, okay. Um, the where was I? It wraps everything up and makes it easier for you to conclude uh, whatever has been said. Americans really like to have everything in a nice, neat package. A nice, neat package. Does that make sense? A lot of sense. Okay. And All right. Easy. Yes? Makes it easier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very direct. Uh, to write one of these, you would put together an outline. And if we have time, and we should, after the vocabulary part, we can talk about some techniques that you would use to practice this sort of thing. But let's talk about the first two paragraphs and see if there's a hook and if you can find it, and what the introduction is, okay? Now, um, I'm going to read these first, and then I'm going to get somebody else to read for me, okay? So, first paragraph. If a cheetah, a wolf, and a well-trained human all entered a marathon, who would win? The cheetah would definitely take an early lead. 
the wolf would probably pass the cheetah after a few miles. But at the end of the 26 miles, the human would be the first to cross the finish line. Um, let's see, Benjamin, can you read that for me, please? Uh, yes. Okay. If a cheetah, a wolf, and well-trained human all enter the marathon, uh, who would win? The uh, cheetah would definitely take an early lead. The wolf uh, would probably pass the cheetah after a few miles, but at the end of the 26 miles, the human would be the first to cross the finish line. Very good. Now, um, do you recognize this word? This word is marathon. Now, try pronouncing it. Marathon. Now, from the context, can you think within this paragraph what the word marathon might mean? What is a marathon? Marathon. It's a, who says it's a run? Mm -hmm. Running competition. The running competition. Uh, okay. Then you're there and then you're gone. Okay. It's a running competition. We've got that. And you figured right. that out because why? How did you figure that out? How did you know it was a running competition? Mm. Well, you look. You can see we've got cheetah and all that and the word finish line. Well, you had, generally have a finish line in a race, right? Mm -hmm. How long a race is it? Who wants to guess? 26 miles. It's a 26 mile race. Who said 26 miles? Who was that? Oh, don't be shy. Okay, but you can see that we've got the word marathon and we've got involved running and crossing a finish line after 26 miles. So a marathon is a very, very long race. <laughs> Does anyone know? I mean, marathons are very popular. I can't run one, but many people do. Um, all right, let me do this next paragraph. Um, humans have only two legs, but an incredible capacity for running. Our powerful lungs give us the stamina we need to run great distances. And because we can sweat, we can control our body temperature while we run. I'm getting feedback. Why are we so good at running? Running was necessary for early human survival. Of course, we don't need to run for survival these days. At the same time, running continues to play an important role in human cultures all over the world. Um, Thais, could you read that for me, please? The same paragraph? The same paragraph, yes. Uh, humans have only two legs, but an incredible capacity for running. Or powerful lungs give us the stamina needed to run great distances. And because we can sweat, we can control our body temperature. Why do we run? Why uh, are we so good at running? Running was necessary for early human survival. Of course, we don't often need to run for survival these days. All the same, running continues to play an important role in human cultures all over the world. Very good. Now, we're taking a look, thank you, we're taking a look at these two paragraphs. Can someone, well, let's take a look at some of the words that are in bold, first of all. What does someone, does anyone know what capacity means? Capacity? Yeah. Yeah, who says yeah? So-so? No. No, me. Okay, give me an, oh, okay. Capacity Daniel. is when you can do anything. Um, close, very close. Mm -hmm. It's the ability, ability to do something and, and how oh. uh -huh. um, your, your, not just the ability, but the amount of time. Look at it this way. If you have a pitcher, 
a pitcher might have the capacity of a gallon, and it will gradually run out. It's a measurement. Um, so a human capacity to run is a measurement of strength. Okay, it's how much strength you have is the capacity. Okay, but, but very very good shot at that, Daniel. Uh, let's see, who can tell me what lungs are? It's the the organs we use for breathing. Absolutely, they're your breathing organs. Okay, and they give us stamina. Stamina. Who's? Let's see, Dimitri, what is stamina? Dimitri. Okay, going once, going twice. Oscar, welcome, Oscar. Uh, do you know what? Thank uh, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Do you know Thank what stamina you. is? Uh, stamina is a capacity that we can do. I think what we can do. I think yes. so. It is. It's what we can do over a long period of time. Um, a cheetah, for example, has speed but no stamina. None. They run very quickly and they use up a lot of energy when they do. They just don't have it in their bodies. Wolves have stamina, but not that far. Okay, they can go several miles, but they'll eventually get tired. Humans have a great deal of stamina because we can take in so much oxygen and because we have fat reserves in our bodies. Uh, somebody like me, I've got a lot of fat in my body. Uh, I could probably walk a great distance um, and still feel pretty good. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so, what is sweat? Is the liquid that you produce when you work out or yeah. it, it, a lot of energy? Yeah, it comes out of your body, yes. Why, why does that help? Why does that help? Exercise. <laughs> well, no. exercise. You can cool our body. Yeah, it cools your body. Yes, we sweat. We we are our body. Yeah, and and we get we get sweat from all over our body. It comes out, which means if we're hot, it it brings the heat out of our body and it evaporates, and our body stays cool. Oh. Wolves cannot sweat. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. no. Wolves pant. So you see a dog going, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's how it sweats. What, what yeah. does it pant? Uh, a pant. Here, I'm going to put my face back up here. When a, uh, <laughs> you've got a dog and it goes <laughs> like that, that is to pant. That is to pant. Okay. Uh, and dogs don't have sweat glands. Dogs and wolves, most canines, do not. I don't know about the others, but we sweat, and that's a great gift. <laughs> I promise you, it's a very great gift. Horses sweat. Um, you don't see a horse pant, but they get a lot of sweat on their bodies. All right? Other questions? Uh, let's see. We go back to screen share, and you can see that again. All right. Now... <coughs> Let's take a look at this, and can you tell me if there is a hook in those first two paragraphs? What, what would the hook be? Hook in the two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. It's a... Um, uh, 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 uh. The first two lines? Yeah, actually, the, the first paragraph itself. Okay, they grabbed you in and said, okay, mm -hmm. if this happens, so putting it in your mind, and then they're telling you the rest of this. They're really getting you to jump in. Mm -hmm. Well, there is the whole main idea of this piece is expressed in one sentence. Who can tell me what the main idea is? Yeah. What? At the what? end of the 26 miles, the human would be the first to cross the finish line. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. What do you think this essay is going to be about? What do you to think? Prove, it, what? Uh, to prove that uh, humans have more capacity for running. Okay, so it's about running. We definitely know that. 
But uh, I, I I think uh, that's uh, the main uh, is uh, what the human can uh, in the history or so what in the culture, for example. Okay, going beyond culture, you're on the right track, Oscar. You definitely are. Um, let What's me, the let difference between uh, man, uh, a human, and, for example, the animals? Um, that would not be the purpose of this. Let's let's look down here. And let me, wrong? Uh, let's see. I'm going to ask Osama to read this part I've highlighted. All the same. Uh, you can let uh, miss up. What's that now? Uh, can't see. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Okay. I can make it bigger if you like. Do you want it bigger? Cultures. All oh. of the world. Right. There is your topic sentence. Running continues to play an important role in human cultures throughout the world. The hook simply talked about animals running and then talks about how good and how well humans run. It tells us more about humans and then says, and this is what I'm talking about. Running plays an important role in human cultures. Okay? Now here's this next paragraph. And this is a supporting idea. Marathon running is perhaps the best known example of human running culture. And there should be a hyphen in there. That is because it is big business. Millions of people worldwide watch as elite runners compete for millions of dollars on television. Do you need to go outside? Yeah. Uh, OK. All right, uh, where are we? Millions of people worldwide watch as elite runners compete for millions of dollars on television. And of course, business promotes products such as athletic shoes during the competition. And let's see, who do I get to read this? Uh, so, so, you read this. Read this paragraph again, please. Okay. Uh, marathon running is perhaps the best known example of human running culture. That is because it's a big business, millions of people worldwide watch as elite runners compete for millions of dollars on television. And of course, businesses promote products such as athletic shoes during the competition. Very good. Now, there's one word in here we need to take a look at, which is elite. elite. Yeah. What, what do you think that means? High class, high people. Yeah, that's probably about right. What tells you that it means high class? Millions of people would watch as elite runners compete. Well, yeah. Millions of people watch them, so they have to be on the top. Yes, yes. Yeah, you wouldn't want to watch lousy runners like me, would you? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Okay. All right. Listen carefully. I'll do the next paragraph, and then... Uh, then I'll find someone else who can read for us. How does someone become an elite marathoner? The legendary runners of Kenya seem to have found the answer. Iten is a small farming town in Kenya's western highlands. It is also home to seven of the world's top ten marathoners. Most of them are members of the Kalenjin tribe. The Kalenjini tend to have ideal bodies for running. Their slim bodies, long legs, and short waists concentrate power where a runner needs it most, the legs. And because Iten is 8,000 feet above sea level, the Kalanjini develop an enormous lung capacity. They need it to get oxygen out of thin air. This gives the Kalanjini an important edge when they compete in races at lower altitudes. Okay. Who can I get to read this? Thais, how about you? Okay. Um, how does someone become an elite marathoner? The legendary runners of Kenya seem to have family answer. Iten is a small farming town in Kenya's western highlands. 
It is also home to seven of, of the world's top ten mar marathon winners. Most of them are members of the Kalenjin tribe. The Kalenjini. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> tend to have ideal bodies for running. Their slim bodies, long legs, and short waists concentrate power most the legs. And because E10 is 8,000 feet above the sea, above sea level, the Tanji develop an enormous lung capacity. Very good. They need to continue? Yes, continue, yes. They needed to get oxygen out of the open air. This gives the Tanji an important edge when they com compete in races at lower altitude. Okay, so we have one new word in here, enormous. Who would like to tell me what enormous means? Is it the mm, Great amount. Okay, let's see. Uh, so I had um, a gentleman speaking. Was that um, Benjamin? Mm -hmm. Elson. Elson, okay. Uh, Hello, you. Elson. Hello. I Hello. Enjoy. Welcome. Thank you. Now, can you tell me what enormous means? Yes, I think enormous uh, means large. Okay, yeah, very, very large. And and what what told you that? Is there something in the the paragraph itself that told you that? Uh, maybe it says a uh, uh, develop an enormous lung capacity. Okay. Know. Well, yeah, I mean that's part of it. Develop and yes. capacity. Um, and because it's high, it won't be as small, it'll be big. So so that tells you what enormous means. Okay. Oops. So we've got enormous. Uh, let's see. Gives. Gives. Uh, who would like to try that? Um, Manuel, you have not spoken in a bit. Can you tell me? Hello, Manuel? Manuel? Okay, let's see. Who haven't we heard from? We've heard from Elson. Um, Benjamin, it's your turn, I think. Gives? Yes. I don't know. Okay. Would someone like to help? I want to try. Okay, yes, yes, please. So-so. I think it's to be born with it. Not born with it. A, yes. well, a, yeah, a gift is something you receive, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not. Gives. Gives. To get. Yeah, go on. I'll give it an opportunity. When um, um, in this case, well. Can I make a try? Absolutely. Oh? Yes, please. Uh, for, uh, I think gives is. Uh, to provide something uh, okay. or to someone. In this case, yes, I agree with you. Uh, it provides this this lung capacity. It's talking about the lung capacity. Provides this. So mm -hmm. this enormous lung capacity, and I did it again. This enormous lung capacity provides the Kalanjani with an edge. An edge. Gosh. Who wants to? Denya, you tell me. What do they mean by an edge? I I don't have idea. What do you think it might mean? That that these have these guys uh, have. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, I think it's a, like a plus. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. It's a plus. Exactly. Ah, it's a plus. Yeah. The the okay. better word, although you're correct, is advantage. Advantage. Okay. Yeah, advantage, an advantage. Yeah. Uh -huh. Something that makes it easier for me to do what it is I want to do. It's like those those incredible runners. There's no way I could compete with them. I mean, I have mm -hmm. a, a long body. I've got good legs, but I've got a good lungs. But I have short, stubby legs. There's no yeah. way I can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, see. Can I ask a question? Yes, who's asking? Thais? Uh, yeah. Okay. I was watching another class, and the teacher was explaining 
um, some words. And could I could could we use or understand that as outstanding, the outstanding, the other? I I don't understand what you're asking. I had I had wow. something about. Could you repeat that, please? The word outstand. Outstand. Okay. It means like the Kalindini outstand the rest of the world. Let's say uh, because they have long legs, because they a city. Um, they yes. Others. That's yeah. And that is. They are outstanding because they have an edge. So in other words, they have the edge, and this makes them outstanding. Do, do you mm -hmm. see the connection? Yes. They are, they get. What they get mm -hmm. gets them. OK? Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? I mean, this is why we do this. <laughs> uh, so if there's something you don't know or don't understand or would like to have clarified, ask it, because you know somebody else is going to ask the same question, but don't wait for them. Do it yourself. All right. Let's see. Who do I want? Dania, my friend Dania in Saudi Arabia. Um, watch this. I'm going to read this rather long paragraph, and then I want you to read it. Okay. Okay. Thousands of miles away from Aten, in the mountains in western Mexico, live the Tarahumara. They call themselves the running people. The Tarahumara do not have much contact with the outside world. However, their amazing capacity for long-distance running has caught the attention of researchers. Unlike the elite marathon runners, the Tarahumara do not compete for prize money. Instead, they run when playing traditional games and when competing in two to three day-long races over the mountains. There is no million-dollar prize waiting for them. For the Tamahumara, running seems to be its own reward. Okay, go ahead. Thousands of miles away from Eden, in the mountains in the western Mexico, live in Tarahumara. They, are, they call themselves the running people. The Tarahumara don't have much contact with outside world. However, their amazing capacity for long distance running has got the attention of researchers. Unlike elite marathons running, the Tarahumara don't compete for prize money. Instead, they run when playing traditional games and when competing in two uh, to three day long uh, races over mountains. There is no million dollar prize waiting for them. For the Tarahumara, running seems to be its own reward. Very good. Now, uh, remember to use your articles, live the Tarahumara um, in the mountains, because you did skip over a couple of those. Did, did you catch yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and also, which is one other thing, um, you were using some contractions, uh, like they do not, and you said don't. If it's written, do not, go ahead and say do not. In normal conversation, you can say don't, and that's fine. They mean the same thing, but, but be careful otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, reward. What is reward? Uh, do you want to try, Danya? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a look at the words we have in here. Okay. You might have seen before, well, they mention it in here. The Tamahamara do not compete for prize money. Since there is no million dollar prize, they seem to be running for their own reward. Look mm -hmm. at that. Like a gift or. Um... Go on, go on, go on. There's uh... another word. Yeah, yeah, but I can't find it. Okay, well, when people compete in the Olympics, okay, or the millions of dollars, um, what, what's a word? Well, 
Okay, Here we go. I've, I've highlighted. And, and someone was speaking. Osama, were you speaking? Prize. Prize. A reward uh -huh. is a prize. Okay? Okay. Now, each, <clears throat> each one of these things has been a supporting detail. Now, we're, we've got some more here. Um, and I want to go down because there is more. Because this thing is quite long. And I want to ask, I'll read this, and then I think I'm going to ask Oscar to read the, the part. It is undeniable that the running cultures of the Kalenjini, the Tarahumara, and the Monks of Hiai are very different. That's Monk there in Japan. However, they all remind us that running has played a significant role in human life and culture. The tradition continues today as people all over the world continue to run for money, sport, exercise, enlightenment, or just plain fun. Oscar, mm -hmm. you read it now, please. Okay. Uh, it is undeniable that the running cultures of the Kalenjini and Tarahumara and the monks of Ye -E are very different. However, they all remind us that running has always played a significant role in human life and culture. The tradition continues today as people all over the world continue to run for money, sport, exercise, and light months, or just plain fun. Good. Now, uh, this word is undeniable. Undeniable. Try that. And, yeah. yes. Undeniable. Very good. Undeniable. Excellent. Thank you. And enlightenment. 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 Very enlightenment. Good. Excellent. Um, where? What country are you in, Oscar? Uh, I'm from Turkey. Turkey. Okay. Well, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. I've always wanted to go to Turkey. I mean, there's so much wonderful <laughs> history there. Um, you are always welcome. <laughs> Thank you. One day I will be there. I want to go to Istanbul okay. so badly. <laughs> I can't tell you how bad. Yes, I want that to go. will will be very good. Okay, <laughs> you are always welcome, and uh, if you come, uh, I can help you. Uh, okay. That will be very pleasant for us. Okay, very good. Well, friend me on Facebook, and uh, oh, yes. <laughs> now let's um, let's put this together. Okay. What what part of this when we're talking about an essay? What is it? Okay. Can someone tell me? Okay. I'm going to highlight this word. And I want, um, let's see. How about, uh, Manuel, I want you to read what it says here. However. Go ahead, Manuel. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, they all remain as that running has always played a significant role in human life and culture. Yes, they all remind us that running has always played a significant role in human life and culture. Now watch this. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning. And let's see, um, Benjamin, read this, please. <clears throat> All the same running countries to play an important role in human cultures all over the world. Okay, so right at the beginning, it tells us this. We've got our supporting details. We go all the way to the end, and it tells us again. Do you see it? Yeah. Yes, that, yes. Okay. That is how you construct an American essay. Okay? We start out we start out with empty paper. We, <laughs> we start out front with the hook about the cheetahs and the wolves and all that. The main idea, our running makes an important part in world culture. The main points we had the uh, the Kenyans we had the Mexicans, okay, and later they talked about the Japanese. We didn't talk about that. And that's the supporting, the main points that support the main idea. And then we had the conclusion, which said, in a slightly different form, 
what was said at the very beginning. So if you want to write an American essay on your TEFL exam, what you want to do is organize the whole thing with an outline. You say, okay, this is my main point, these are my details, this is my conclusion. You take about three, four minutes to have it all blocked out in your mind, and then you write it. And that's a very good way to pass and write it within that 25-minute time period. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to do my favorite part of these classes. And that is, <clears throat> you ask me questions and I answer them. All right? Can you guys see me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the way we work it, it's you pretty much ask me anything you want. If I can answer it, I will. There's some asked questions I will not be allowed to answer. But if it's possible for me to answer the question, I will. I've had everything from questions about idioms to why am I bald. So <laughs> take your pick. <laughs> I don't care. All right. Um, who has a question? Well, can you give us a topic uh, that will be uh, better for us? For example, <laughs> sport or uh, time spending, for example. Um, do you want me to do that right now or tell you what that might be on the test? I don't understand no. the question. Okay, uh, you told us, uh, please ask me. Uh, about uh, oh, what okay. we, uh, uh, about can I ask you? Uh, can you give us a topic uh, that we can ask you? Anything you can ask me about English uh, words in English that um, you don't know or understand. You can ask me about universities in America. You can ask me about um, anything. You can ask me about. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, what is the weather now? <laughs> <laughs> it is very nice. I'd say it's uh, probably 54 degrees, between 54 and 60. The air is, the sky is clear, the sun is beautiful. All the leaves have fallen out for fall. It's very nice out. It's beautiful. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, what time is it just now in you? In me here in the yes. U.S., it, in my section, I mean, there's four time zones, actually five. But in my time zone, it is 12.49. It's like 10 minutes until 1 p.m. So it's, it's mid-afternoon okay. for me. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. okay. Now, yeah, so, in 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We run classes 24 hours because there's so many different time zones and so many different people. So chip in any time. You'd always be welcome. So-so. They didn't have lunch, right? What's that? I have. They didn't have lunch. This is our normal lunch time, but mm -hmm. I wait till I'm finished with class and then I eat lunch. <laughs> but <laughs> I really good. don't need a whole lot of lunch. <laughs> okay. Are so you just in, in? Are you just in your house, or uh, so? Where are you just now? I'm at home. I'm at home. Ah, at home. Yeah. Ah, okay. I mean, I got the best job in the world. I work out of my home. <laughs> yes, you know. that's, that's very good. Yeah, it's so much fun. Okay, uh, Soso, you have a question. Yes. Um, how long will it take me to get an, let's say, MA degree in USA? How many it, years? How many years? Um, it depends on the school. It's usually two to three years. And it depends on the school itself you go to. And it depends on the degree you're looking for. I have mm -hmm. a friend who got a communications degree. I think he got it from Bowling Green State University in Ohio, and it took him two years. How about linguistics, semantics? Generally, again, two to three years. The better schools, the mm -hmm. better schools, it will take longer, but the degree is worth considerably more. Okay, mm -hmm. to get my master's degree, I got it in leadership. It took me three years. Three years. A doctorate would take me four, um, but. I went to Gonzaga University. I took a lot of classes online. So it, it just varies, but for masters, two to three years. Okay. okay. Other questions? Good question, by the way. Thank you. Teacher. Yes. About um, the topics you teach? Yes. Um, the the hawk, hawk sentence always is funny. It's big, strong, I don't know. I don't understand. Could could um, you? You teach the the first sentence in the paragraph. Yes. It's a hook hook sentence. 
you you have in any paragraph you would have in this case not necessarily a hook but uh -huh. a topic oh, it tells you uh -huh. what each thing is about oh, the, okay. uh -huh. the hook is only to bring you into the entire document for the people pay attention yes exactly exactly oh, okay? okay good yeah. question thank you yes mm -hmm. that'll definitely apply when you take the test mm -hmm. okay. yeah. good good mm -hmm. thank you other questions I'm um, Kevin. Uh, okay. Uh, female and then Oscar. Who who said I'm Kevin? I do. I'm sorry? I, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, where could we find um, this information? Uh, like, I mean, uh, if we want grammar, we can look up for grammar. What is, the, what is it you were teaching us? It, it is writing, which is what you Well, writing. what I was using was copyrighted material, but so I can't share it with you, the, the physical yeah. material. Sure. But you can actually use your Google or Yahoo to mm -hmm. Google in an American grammatical or American composition. Or, composition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and that will give you some of the outlines and all that. It's all very standard stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, so how about Eastern Michigan? Great school. Mm -hmm. I don't know that much about it, except I know it's very, very good. That's the best okay. I can tell you. Okay? Oscar, okay, thanks. you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we uh, take the document that you just uh, wrote us? Uh, can, we, can you give us this document? And we, uh, can we uh, continue to read I can the... In other words, I have the right to use it to teach with, but I can't give you that the actual papers. I can't give you those actual papers. It was like I was saying, the, the best way for you to get copies of that is to go online and do some searching. Even Wikipedia has some great stuff inside of it about how to write an essay. It's very good. Okay? Wish I could do it. I can't. Okay, okay thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay. Uh, Danya, anything? No, thank you. Okay. Oh, we got some feedback. Um, let's see. Benjamin. No, thanks. Okay. Danya. More questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Este, I am confused. What different is in the might and may? There is almost no difference. No difference? Almost done. Oh, uh-huh. In my country, all time, teach is a uh, different. Um, uh -huh. I mean, it may be in England, British English. Yeah. But for practical purposes, um... Here would be the distinction. Mm -hmm. May would usually, usually mm -hmm. imply human choice. I Whoa. may go outside. I'm electing to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm electing to do this. Might tends to, tends to not include personal choice. An event might occur. So, it, it, you know, even if some teachers say might is 50% and may is 70, for all impractical purposes, and we're talking practical here, it doesn't make a difference. Uh -huh. Now, if you're taking the TEFL test, I honestly don't know. But I know insofar as usage, uh -huh. there's, there's none. There's really none. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody? Manuel? Uh, can I ask you something? Yes, uh, about learning English, uh, sure. do you recommend us uh, to uh, watch TV shows with subtitles? Absolutely. For example, the, oh, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it better to read or to watch? What's better for, for you? Or both? both? Well, the subtitles, the only thing that subtitles will really do, and again, you want to use, um, I would even follow the English subtitles because without, not your native language subtitles, because the English um, will give you an understanding of the context. These are not literal translations, what we would call transliterations. These are translations of the meaning. 
Okay, so you'll get the meaning, uh, but you won't necessarily get the right words. But it helps you start to think in the language because you can put a series of phrases together. Then you would take it and apply what you learned when you are coming to a class like this because you've watched it, you've, you've basically done your homework, and that gives you a very good position to understand how those, such things are actively used. So yes, I recommend it. I recommend it very highly. Teacher? Thank you. Yes, yes, Tanya. Yes. Uh, how can I uh, improve my uh, writing skill? Well, we have specific classes in writing. Yeah. Uh, so I would first of all go to those. Um, you might have uh, books uh, in fact, I've been to somewhere to the malls that in Jeddah, and there are books on English composition, and I would just read those. Um, the other thing, and this is probably the most important, is read books in English. Wow. Um, you know, if you've read Lord of the Rings, I don't know if you can get that in Saudi Arabia, but but there's some classic books, mm -hmm. and you just read them. Give and, me a hand. Can you? Give me some names. Um, let's see. I would, if you could read something by Ernest Hemingway, I would I definitely read that. something academic. Academic. Because academic. I will, yeah. Do you mean I, like I a... Prefer, a I, I prefer for islets. Um, if you want English literature, yeah. there's a couple. Like I said, Ernest Hemingway is considered one of the best writers. Um, he wrote very simply. A more classic style was by a guy named F. Scott Fitzgerald. They the were contemporary. Gatsby. The Great Gatsby, which is, again, a very, very good book. It's very easy to read, but the, the language is good. Okay. Again, what we're talking about, books that were written probably around the beginning part of the 20th century. That's where some of the best writing style was. And it's what we use as a classic style. Does that help you? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Good question. So, One so more. bring the books, okay? I'm sorry? Okay. What My friend should bring the books also. <laughs> okay. You have it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. Good, good. Um, I think we've got time for one more. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. How old am I? I'm 54. Why am I bald? I shaved my head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why, why did you shave it? Because if you can see, I was starting to go bald anyway. <laughs> and, and I decided, you so know I what? Did? I did? Yeah, I was like, come on. <laughs> you know, it, men, a lot of men try and comb over to kind of try and hide. It doesn't fool anybody. <laughs> so let's.